I was blown away by the Weeble too, and I didn't think that I would be. Here's why. Hi, my name is Malcolm O'Dell, and recently Weedio and Zion did a collaboration. They decided to send me their new Zion Weeble 2 to review because they know that I am a DJI Ronin user and they wanted to bring me over to their site. Sometimes as filmmakers, we get so stuck in our ways of using a certain device. This is the only device that we tell people they should buy because it's all we know. I was surprised recently with the Zion Weeble 2 because I was a little bit scared when I first picked it up because the whole functionality and layout and design is a lot different to what I'm used to. So for now, let's get rid of the DJI RS2 and let's talk about the Weeble 2. So on first inspections, the way that Zion have structured and laid out their Weeble 2 is quite different to what we're used to with other handheld gimbal devices. It has this unusual L-shape the grip at the back has a locking mechanism that slides on and off, which is actually really simple and easy to use and actually makes the transition of shots and how you use the gimbal very, very easy. It has three locking safety measures, which obviously when you're attaching six and a half, seven grand's worth of equipment to it, you wanna make sure that it's safe, that you're not dropping your equipment. So it has a little button just here. It also has a lever that slides out and it also has another little safety locking mechanism just below it. Now the grip that it comes with has two quarter inch um, screw mounts here and also a hot shoe mount for attaching anything you want. One of the things that blew me away about this product, and I thought it was a bit of a gimmick at the start, and it was a pro and a con at the same time, but after getting my hands on it and using it a lot more, it's no longer a con, it's a pro, and it's this 2.88 inch touchscreen monitor that they've attached just here that slides out and swivels and is easily put away and when it is put away it shuts itself off so it doesn't consume any power now the reason why i thought it was a gimmick it was like why do you need a monitor this size when all you're doing is maybe changing and adjusting some functions and some settings now other devices you have to dive in deep or the monitor is really small or you have to use your phone and connect via Bluetooth. But what Weeble have done is they've created this seamless, easy to use, fully functioning touchscreen 2.88 inch monitor to have all the settings just laid out so easy and simple. This completely customizable menu system. But one of the things that I loved so much about this monitor is a problem that I've had in the past when I've been using things like the DJI, especially in conjunction with the Sony A7S Mark III, is this little fold-out monitor. So when you've got HDMI cables and the other cables plugged into the side and they're all connected via USB-C around the device, when you're getting high shots or low shots, you don't have the full functionality of that fold-out monitor on the Sony A7S Mark III because those cables get in the way. So what if you wanted to get a high shot and still wanted to see what you're doing? Well, I can't show you right now, but one of the other devices and one of the other packages that Zion do with the Weeble 2 is they do the Zion Weeble 2 Pro Combo Package. Now what that has is it has a focus motor and a transmitting device. Just like on the DJI RS2 where you have the Raven Eye, Weeble have their own too. But what this also does is it transmits on certain cameras, it transmits what the camera is seeing to this little monitor. So if you've got everything connected and you wanna get that high shot, you still can because you can see it through a 2.88 inch monitor right here. So there's no restrictions or concerns about being able to see those high and low shots. The package we have here is the, the Weeble 2 combo package, which you, you get everything you see here, minus the FX6 and the 16 to 35 Zeiss. But you also get your little case with it as well, just like you do with the DJI, which you can see back here. And I was quite blown away by the, the quality of the case, the quality of the packaging, the way it's laid out, the, the structure and the overall price 
The combo package comes in at 560 pounds. And if you wanted that functionality with the transmitting device and the focus motor, it's around 700 to 720 pound here in the UK. So depending on what you're using and what you're shooting, you know, the, the Zion Weeble is great. Now, one of the things that disappointed me a little bit about this device is the fact that you can't change the batteries. The batteries are built in, but, big but. I took this out the other day and I wanted to maximum load it out or as much as I can. I mean, you're not really gonna be wanting to put much more on top of it than what I am here. This whole um, layout, this whole rig, the camera, the monitor, the lens, and the counterweight that I have on the back here is 2.4 kg. Now the overall maximum payload capacity of the Weeble 2 is 3.5 kg. And if you balance it properly, they say that the batteries will last nine hours and they take 1.6 hours to charge up. Now, like I said, I was a little bit annoyed the fact that I didn't have the possibility or the capabilities of being able to change the battery being on set if I needed to. But being out the other day with this heavy load on, and filming for two hours straight, I only used around 10% of the battery itself. So to me, having an interchangeable battery on the Weeble 2 is overkill. It's adding more functionality and more research and development and investment into a product by Zion, which then forces the price point of the device to be higher. It's not needed. The battery lasts enough, especially if in between you're not using the monitor and you fold it away, this automatically shuts itself off, which to me I thought was great. The balancing and the functionality and the overall setup of the, the Weeble 2 was easy, seamless, even balancing um, the, the FX6 that we have here was relatively simple, just using a small tilter um, counterweight on on the bottom here just to give it a bit more bottom weight as we maxed it out here now the difference between the two devices the Weeble 2 and the DJI RS2 when it comes to price point is around 130 pound so for the DJI combo package so without the Raven Iron focus system and the Weeble 2 combo package, there's only around a £130 difference. Now for that £130 difference, you're getting a carbon fiber structure with the DJI Ronin, you're getting an interchangeable battery, um, and you're also getting 12 hours of battery life rather than the nine hours of battery life which you get on the Weeble. It takes 1.5 hours to charge up the DJI Ronin RS2. Now you'd say, okay, great, for an extra 130 pound, I can get carbon fiber and I can get interchangeable batteries and I can get an extra three hours on battery life so I can go from nine to 12, but do you need all that? What do you shoot with? If you shoot with DSLRs and you know mirrorless cameras and they're quite light, you know, the Weeble allows a Sony a7S Mark III and a 24 to 70 G Master, which is quite a front heavy lens. In calculation, I think that equates to around 1.2 or 1.4 kilos. I'm not quite sure. But if that's all you're shooting on, why do you need to pay the extra 130 pounds? This device itself weighs 1.5 kilos and because of the carbon fiber on the DJI RS2, that weighs one kilo. Does that half a kilo make a difference? Maybe if you're shooting for 12 hours and it's in your arms and you're not used to it. But I don't know any environment where you're gonna be holding a gimbal for 12 hours straight. The interchangeable batteries, is that necessary? Are you gonna be shooting for nine hours straight? If you are inexperienced with gimbals and you don't balance it properly and it drains the battery quickly, then yes. But the caveat to that and what you can do with the Weeble is you can actually, through USB-C, is plug in an external power pack to obviously still allow you to run and use the device without having to stop for an hour and a half to charge it up. So it does have an option, whereas if the battery does run out, you can plug in a power bank. Now, like I said, I was initially concerned that picking up another device that I wasn't used to, a completely different brand, that I would be disappointed by the Weeble 2, but I'm actually not. The ergonomics and the layouts, even down to the button system and the focus wheel being on the side here, makes the whole functionality and usability easier. Before we had to adjust our grip and bring our thumb round to press buttons, you know, the, the trigger button on the back has always been in the same place across the board, but 
on other devices you've got your your buttons and your, your joystick and stuff on the front so you have to almost release the strong part of your grip which is that curled part whatever you want to call it to press the buttons or use the thumbstick now it's on the side so we still get our full use of the grip to wrap all the way around the device so we don't lose any grip on the device when it comes to the overall visuals of the weeble now i'm a sucker for pretty things and yes you know i'm trying not to be biased because i'm a dgi user and yes i do love the fact that it's carbon fiber but just the aesthetics and the colors and the the finish of the metal and the plastic and the rubberized grip and the way the tripod feet are underneath like even even the structure and the change of the way the device is laid out with having this now L shape rather than it just being one solid fixed body, long body like the DJI RS2. I really, really like it. I was blown away by the performance, especially having the FX6 and the counterweights and stuff on top when we took it out and shot. It's really smooth. And one of the other things that I actually really like, and I don't know if this is a purposeful thing or whether it's just different device or different motors, but something that I've witnessed with the DJI RS2 is if you knock it or it's off weight or you give it a knock, it starts to do this like crazy thing where it just goes mental, which is annoying because you can twist up your cables, damage your device. But if you're there filming on a film set and your client's there as well, and the, the people in charge are there filming and they see you with this DJI Ronin just having a fit like a little three-year-old child who doesn't get their own way, it almost makes you feel like you don't know what you're doing, but the Weeble doesn't seem to do that. Putting this weight on top of it and having a few errors where I do a barrel roll or do you know a quick movement and it didn't like it because the weight was off or I flicked it too much or whatever. It just did a little knock and then just reset itself or it did a little knock and then knock back and then set itself. It didn't start doing all this crazy stuff. Same as when, if I went from a high or a low point or I went round to invert the axis itself, sometimes the DJI Ronin just, like I said, goes crazy and starts spinning, but the Weeble didn't do that. The Weeble seemed to be in more control. And I don't know if that's down to the motors that Zion have used, or it's down to the software or the processing chip that it uses or a new piece of technology. The overall control in the Zion Weeble 2 seems more controlled than any other device that I've picked up. How long the charge lasts on the Weeble 2 is nine hours in comparison to the DJI, which lasts 12 hours. However, if you're gonna be using a gimbal on set for nine hours straight, you're a strong human being. I've never used it for that long. I've never had a battery die. And the good thing about the Weeble is yes, the batteries are built in, but the good thing about the Weeble is you can connect a USB-C cable with a power bank at the bottom and you can run it from that power bank. So you can have as many power banks as you need, which are actually cheaper than what the DJI RS2 battery grips are. So to me, that's a no brainer. Now, one of the other things I love that Weeble have done is they place this little toggle switch on the side here, which allows you to change between pan follow, lock follow and follow mode. Now, if you don't want to get the monitor out and you want to flick through the settings, you know, having that functionality of just being able to quickly switch between different modes is great. We took the Weeble 2 out to Portobello Road in London recently to shoot some model stuff with Daisy Louvre and we wanted to shoot some artistic, creative, slow motion stuff using some of the settings that the Weeble 2 has. So for example, we wanted to use the follow mode, the lock mode, the pan mode and also my favourite is what Zion call it, the vortex mode. As you can see that the motions and the movements are smooth, the transitions between quick and slow shots, even though we are shooting in slow motion are seamless and smooth even with the Sony FX6, the 16 to 35 mil Zeiss and the monitor attached. Yes, we haven't quite pushed the Weeble 2 to its limits of 3.5 kilo with being one kilogram short, but I think that adding anything more than or requesting that the Weeble 2 hold more than 3.5 kg is overkill. The fluidness, the smoothness, the usability, the ergonomics, the settings, the, the way that the, the handles and stuff are laid out, 
actually made me want a Weeble too. That actually made me want to have one of these in my arson. Now the reason why Zyun have set up the Weeble 2 like this is because of functionality and usability. The way they've structured it and having the quick locking removable handguards, the, the locking pins here which lock the gimbal away itself, and also a quick release plate which is actually a Manfrotto plate, so if you wanted to take this off here and quickly put it on a Manfrotto tripod or fluid head, you can, which I think is great, because when you're swapping between gimbal shots and stick shots, like I'm shooting right now on the, the Manfrotto N8, I could just quickly swap this from there to there. But the reason why they've structured and laid this out is if you're quickly moving about, or you're moving from a location to another location, it can literally be taken apart and put back together very, very easy, very simple, and fits nicely in storage bags. If you didn't want to use the case, and you were just putting it in your backpack. That's the reason why they've laid it and made it and created it this way. Before you decide to jump in and rent the first gimbal you see on the video platform, just check and find out what you're shooting, what camera systems you're going to be using, and what gimbal is best for you. The Zyun Weeble 2 has a 3.5 kilogram payload and has great connectivity and versatility with most cameras. As you can see, I've connected the FX6 with a 16 to 35 mm Zeiss. It's got the battery in it, a counterweight and the monitor on it and works fine. We still have a kilo to play with. But if you're going to be using a larger camera system and you want to be thinking about maybe using matte boxes and you want to be using larger lenses and bodies and V-Lock batteries and that, then maybe go for a larger gimbal system like the DJI RS2, which has a four and a half kilo payload rather than a two and a half kilo payload. But if you're going to be using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera for an event shoot or music video or something that's very, very minimal with kit, then the Zion Weevil 2 is great. Now, one thing to remember across the board with any rental on video, especially when it comes to gimbals, is these devices have a lot, a lot, a lot of parts in the packaging when you rent these. So make sure that when you are going to pick up your rental for the first time from the person you're renting from, make sure that you check everything is in there. Make sure you check that the right connectivity cables are in there for connecting your device, the camera you're using, to the Weeble that you're renting or to the device that you're renting. You'd hate to get on a film set to find out that the trigger cable or the USB cable is not in there and you aren't able to record and stop recording from the actual device itself and you have to keep going up to the camera. So just make sure that everything's in there. As I said, there are a lot of parts. Make sure that when you hand the gimbal back, like I said, there are a lot of parts. So make sure that each one of those parts are put back in their corresponding and correct place within the case that it comes in. So the Zion and the DJI both come in nice little two compartment um, carry cases and everything has its own little space. So just make sure, be courteous, to put the equipment back the way you found it. So you've got your Zion Weeble, you've rented it, but you've never set up a gimbal for and you don't actually know how to balance it properly. Now, when it comes to balancing any gimbal, it's very, very important that you get it right. And the reason why this is, is because your actual, if you don't get it right, your actual shots will be jeopardized and compromised and you won't get the smooth, seamless shots that you're hoping for when using the gimbal system because the balance and because the device is actually struggling to keep the balance. It will also drain battery life quite considerably if you don't balance it correctly because the motors are having to fight more and use more power to keep the whole gimbal system stabilized. So this is how we balance any gimbal system with a roll, pan and tilt axis. So three axis, we start from the top and we do the back and forth, which is actually the, the tilt axis. So first of all, what, what we wanna be looking out for is we wanna balance the camera so it'll actually stay upright. We can't really go down right at the moment because obviously the lens is a bit, well, it's a bit long, so we won't be able to go down. But what we wanna be doing is basically locking everything else off, locking all the other points off here so nothing else moves and just getting the balance left and right. So to me, the fact that that stays there, that's balanced. So now that we've balanced it this way, so obviously it sits facing upwards perfectly, what we wanna do is balancing it front and back now. So to me, it's a little bit front heavy. So all we can do is we're just gonna disconnect uh, the slide mechanism here, move it just a smidge back, if it will go. 
little bit back heavy. So now we've done the tilt axis, we've done front and back. Um, it sits nicely like this. It also sits nicely there. So now we know that the tilt axis is balanced almost perfectly. Next, we want to be checking out the roll axis. So all you're going to be doing back here is locking off the tilt axis, unlocking the roll axis, and checking if it's balanced. We should be able to move the camera to most positions and it should almost stay in that position. If it doesn't, you wanna be moving the camera left and right. So we wanna be disconnecting the mechanism back here and moving the camera on itself left and right. We don't need to right now as I've pretty much balanced it fine. Now we've done the roll axis, we wanna be doing the pan axis. <clears throat> so how we do this is we lock off the tilt and the roll axis and then we unlock the pan axis. We tilt the Zion, we tilt the Zion Weeble forward about, I wouldn't say quite 45 degrees, but we give it enough to see if it, it, if it moves around. Now what we wanna be looking out for here is wherever we position the camera, wherever we move it to, is that it virtually stays where it is. So it's not locked off, but wherever I'm moving it to, it's pretty much staying, as you can see, where it is. Now to me, that is perfectly balanced. So now that the device is perfectly balanced, we turn on the Zion and we run a calibration check. So it's called a balance check in the Zion menu function and it's in the first menu function with the little clock and then it's called balance check. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on balance check and we're gonna check it to make sure that it's all balanced. And as we move around, we should be able to see what parameters are struggling and what aren't. Now that's done, what we want to be doing is making sure that we go to an auto calibration as well. Now what this does on an auto calibration is allow the device to understand that it's balanced correctly and it makes any fine tune adjustments to the roll, pan and tilt axis if we're slightly off. Now that's the Zion Weeble perfectly balanced. Now as you can see that it has no issue no issue struggling with the weight of the FX6, the counterweight, the monitor, and the 16 to 35 mil lens. There's no issue whatsoever, no struggling, perfectly balanced. So why do I think you should get the Zion Weeble 2 over any other gimbal device? And it's purely down to price point. To me, what you're getting for 560 pound on the combo package it cannot be beaten anywhere else. No, you're not getting a carbon fiber body with an interchangeable battery and the DJI logo brand stuck to it. But what, what you are getting is a phenomenally designed, ergonomic, aesthetically pleasing gimbal device for £560, which can keep up with some of the more expensive gimbals that are on the market today. I put this against the DJI RS2, which costs around 130 pounds to 150 pound more for each package, so whether it be the Pro, the Combo, the Pro Combo, there's a couple of different packages that you can get. But based on pure body functionality, I put the same camera, the same body, the same weight on it, and the shots, I can't tell the difference. The functionality, the smoothness, the, the usability, to me, there is, there is no comparison. You get great content and great shots from both devices, but the Weeble 2 is cheaper. You get an aesthetically designed ergonomic gimbal from a company that are thinking outside of the box. They're not following the same patterns. They're trying to place their own footprint on the gimbal market by incorporating new designs, new features and new structures and new ways to lay out and use these handheld gimbal systems for our DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies and systems. I love the fact that they've incorporated this 2.88 inch monitor. I love the fact that they've added the thumbstick, joystick and all the buttons on the side, which is easily accessible for my thumb. I don't have to change and transition positions and get all awkward and move it around and, and whatever. 
The fact that they've added this grip on the back, which has three safety measures of locking it in place, but slides on and off very, very easy. So there's no screwing or twisting or it, you know, as you're holding it, you know, you, you're gripping it and it unlocks like on the DJI RS2, you know, it's got the core inch screws with the, the, the briefcase mount. So sometimes if you hold it awkwardly, it'll unscrew itself and then you lose the shot. This is rigid, it's strong, it's secure. The shots you get from it are seamless and smooth, even with a large body, large camera system on top of it. You can actually purchase the Weeble 2 in four different packages. You can buy it on its own as just the Weeble 2. You got the Weeble 2 combo, which gives you the cables, everything you see here, and the carry case. If you wanted to go one step further and get the transmitting device and also the focus motor, you can do that, which is the Weeble 2 Pro combo. And if you wanted to go one step further, which I love and would have loved to have gotten my hands on, is the Weeble 2 Pro Plus, which you get a nice little monitor with joysticks and functionality to be able to change and alter and control the Weeble 2 wirelessly and also get a live feed to this handheld device, which I think is just great as a whole package. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's swayed your decision on whether you want to try out and check out the Zion Weeble 2. Check out the Weedio website where you can get your hands on one of these from another renter to give it a go and see what you think about the Zion Weeble 2 or check out the subscription plans to get your hands on one of these and own it for good. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon and happy filming.